how do you actually whittle it down to understand what are those core values that really matter from a list that looks amazing and who wouldn't want all of those core values? It's hard. It's the hardest part of the acceptance and commitment process, I think, is, is doing just that. Um, but if everything's important, then nothing's important. It's very cliche, but I think it's true. So I think a forcing mechanism of getting to three to five core values is actually really important. And it's not to say that others don't matter and that you don't want to be all 100, but it's to say like, these are the three to five hills I'm going to die on. Or like when there's a real big change, this is kind of my menu of options for how to respond to that big change. In a couple of ways, one is to think about people in your life that you really admire. And of the 30 that you're wrestling with, ask like, what five do you really admire them for? Because those are the five that you probably value the most. Another way to do it is to imagine yourself um, older, wiser version of you down the road looking back on current you. And what do you want older, wiser you to remember yourself for? And then a final way that appears in a lot of acceptance and commitment um, therapy manuals is this notion of like, what's going to be on your gravestone? And you can't fit all 100. So it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy to whittle down. And it's not that you don't care about all of these wonderful core values, but it's about saying like, what are, what are the ones that are really essential? And when I go through this exercise with people, most people can tend to get it to like 15 to 20. And that doesn't take much time, but the process of getting it from 15 to 20 to three to five, that can take like two months. And it's wrestling with things, it's combining things, it's kind of figuring out like, I like sport, movement, health and well-being, and these are all kind of related. So like, what's the overarching thing there? And maybe it's vitality. Maybe it's completely different than tennis. You know, you end up, you start with like sport and you end up with vitality. Um, but I think just kind of wrestling with these and asking like being versus having, what's the underlying thing here? Um, and then getting it down to three to five. And then for each of those, as we talk about is, um, it's just so important to like really define them because Everyone's probably worked for a company with like core values on the wall, but that's it. Like they're on a pretty poster and no one actually practices them. So these are only useful if you know what they mean and, and you're able to call on them in day to day life. And then in that change, to channel them as a way forward. So a lot of the change that are, is discussed isn't of your control or isn't of your agency. So, yes, there might be a time where you go, you know what? LA's for me, I'm going to move to LA and I'm going to chase this dream and I'm going to get on a plane. But there might be times where your career says, hey, there's no more work for you here in New York. We need to move you to Miami. And all of a sudden, this change is forced upon you. And in that, you need to bring those core values to the forefront and say, okay, how can I act in these core values on a daily basis to find my homeostasis in this new location? to really ground myself in who I am in a completely new environment, meeting new people and potentially making new friends and getting closer with colleagues and performing at my best. If you don't have those core values or if you have a list of 50, well, that change is going to be very difficult for you to reorient yourself in that new environment. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better myself. Your core values are your sources of stability. Like That's your ruggedness. And you can take them with you pretty much wherever you go. How you practice them will look very different, but the actual values themselves, they can always guide your actions. And generally speaking, if we're acting in alignment with our values, what we're going through doesn't get easier, but we tend to feel a little bit better than if it's just total chaos. And this is the, the, the point that we try to make with all of our X Factor members, which is if you get these core values correct, when you engage in them, your whole life is going to change for the better. You're going to feel that much more better because you're actually engaged in the things that are important to you. And if it's done right, they're also tied towards a goal. So by engaging in these core values every day, you're getting closer to your goal through the, the what is important to you. So you wake up excited. And so we tell our, all of our members, don't worry about nailing this today as we discuss this. Get, get your three together and then we'll work in the next few weeks to see and round out what those other two might be because these are going to have a significant impact on how, how you go about today and then how you see the world through engaging in these core values. And then lastly, uh, the, the, what you said about 
why these need to be protected is so important. And there's so much in this world that errs on the side of take it easy. You need to relax. You can't, you need to just go with the flow. Well, unfortunately, when it comes to these core values, if you do, if you have that mindset towards these core values, well, then they're not guiding anything, are they? They're, they're, you're still just twisting in the wind. These are going to be your rudder to get you to where you want to go. Why it is so important that you learn how to b- build boundaries around them and that and, and adhere to them. That's right. You guys are both just like preaching and I'm here for it. Um, I think that, you know, the way that I like to think about it is like, it's okay to be super rigid on your core values and then be flexible on everything else. Yep. And 100%. You look at like evolution, you know, change on the grandest scale there is. And the species that survive, they do just that. Like the attributes that they don't change are the attributes that make them who they are. Because if they lost those, they would no longer be who they are. But then you, like, you better believe they change everything else. So they are like completely non dual super rugged on the core values and then flexible everywhere else. And for listeners, it sounds like you do a lot of this good work in the X factor, but in case people aren't a part of that or are new to this, it also doesn't have to be that complicated. You know, a value of creativity might just mean 45 minutes of deep focus work on a creative project a day. It's amazing what 45 minutes of deep focus work on a creative project will do for a creative person that doesn't have that. Presence might just mean putting your phone away between 6 and 8 p.m., even if it's so hard to do, to be there for your friends, your spouse, your kids, if you have them. Um, Movement or health could just be 30-minute walk four days a week. So like the, the changes themselves are often small and simple, and the effects truly are transformational. 